good morning to you. Um, get us going here. Hopefully Lee will be here by the time we're ready for songs this morning. He is on his way. Um, good to see you. I told someone, I said, isn't it, see someone and say, good to see you, isn't it really good when you're really glad to see them and they're glad to see you? And we have, have a lot of that action going on here, don't we? Uh, another beautiful day. Um, August is... I know we just we keep saying these things, but just flying by, and um, we go through some announcements here. Volunteers needed to clean the church, and uh, when blessed, uh, Julia has done it for this time. So anyway, just we'll keep praying about it. We'll see what happens, and uh, we'll let God answer that prayer one way or another. Either uh, we will uh, rise up and uh, to the to the challenge there or we will see that it's just not for us to do and we'll hire that out or whatever the situation might be the main thing is is that we put it in God's hands we don't let it bring undue tension or anxiety into our lives or disrupt our fellowship we say that again September is covered October's covered oh there's somebody signing this thing out here Okay, okay. Yeah. Ted, I won't shame him by what he said about you before service. So. Yeah. Oh, my. And uh, got our two minute rush rolling in the door. So, uh, two weeks community service in Colchester. Uh, First Baptist Church has that services. No services at all here that day. September 12th, Matthew and Sarah Titus and their children will be here. And uh, the plan is now uh, that uh, I have, I'm waiting to hear back from them. Hopefully they will stay for Sunday dinner and missions committee and spouses are all invited for Sunday dinner that day on September 12th. So we'll see how all that works out. Um, they're traveling, so it's not like us with we can just walk in there and see our phone or sit down at the uh, computer or whatever, so I'll hear back from them. We'll do the service like we did with the Carters, and uh, to give them plenty of time, uh, Matthew, to share a good word from the Lord for them to give an update, and then have some time left over for uh, our questions to them. Uh, set September 13, board meeting at 9 a.m., and I did talk, I think I talked to all the guys. If I left you out, I didn't intend to, but we were in agreement that this month may be just better to um, postpone our men's Bible study, and we will resume on October 4th instead of trying to uh, work it in. The, the date for it this uh, month was, or for September, was uh, Labor Day, and uh, so that just, that wasn't really going to work, so... Anyway, do we have any other announcements that I need to bring our attention to this morning? Okay, let's uh, move on to uh, prayer requests then. Uh, John has two treatments left, Monday and Tuesday, and then he can start the healing process. So this has been, well, as with several of you, a very rough journey. Uh, Randy and Chuck and Julia can, can identify with these things different journey but but uh, just kind of the same thing so lift them up before the Lord uh, all of them and uh, we had a oh, we had a really good visit with uh, Janice Cam Friday yeah Friday and uh, she she likes to get the scoop finding out what all of you are doing and uh, so anyway that was that was just really good she's doing well um, she eventually will be moving to Palmyra, uh, Missouri. That's where Eddie, Eddie and family, if they've, well, their home is in the process of selling. They've already moved. They're renting a house in Palmyra. Am I pronouncing that right? Yeah. Nope. Palmyra. Palmyra. That's not what I said. Well, it was close. <laughs> <laughs> Who knows? I mean, I think I was hearing Palmyra. You know, I bet that's what I was saying, Palmyra. And so anyway, they went ahead and moved because their oldest daughter has started uh, college and they won't get charged the out-of-state fee that way. So keep them in our prayers. Keep Jeanette and Marlon in our prayers and uh, she keeps moving along. Um, keep 
speaking of things that we're anticipating, if you've, you've probably read something similar to the, the Christians in uh, Afghanistan. I, it, here's, here's, what I, here's what I read, that there's many of the Christians in Afghanistan are expecting to meet Jesus within the next couple of weeks because of the Taliban uh, takeover. So their faith is, uh, well, it, it should be just as real to us because we could, any of us could be gone um, at any time. But if we could keep them uh, before the Lord in our prayers, uh, much anguish of heart in uh, Afghanistan, but really all over this world. And it's all because of our rebellion. And the humans rebelled against God. Invite, you know, we have the, the story Pandora's box, but this is much worse than that. It goes to the very depths of our being, of the human psyche. It contaminates, it poisons everything. And, uh, but God's done something about it. <clears throat> he so loved the world that he sent his son to make the proper sacrifice to pay the sufficient price. That we go from that darkness into his marvelous light forever to share in God's glory. And uh, here comes our song leader, too. So I'm praising the Lord, too. So, Debbie? Um, my um, children's father's wife, Gail Ellis, was diagnosed this past week with uh, lung cancer. She has a pretty good-sized mass on her lung, and it's real close to a couple of her heart valves, and it's inoperable. Okay. And she's just... Gail... Gail Ellis, yes. uh, diagnosed with lung right. cancer. And um, my grandson, Evis, who is going to <clears throat> Wesleyan University, if we could be praying about some financial support for him for the rest of his tuition, um, I would really appreciate okay. that. Okay. Evis needs help with tuition. Anything else this morning? Yes. The Smitty family, many of us. Smitty? Smitty. Family. Okay. Yep, that's what I thought you were saying. Um, it would have been Glenn, her first husband's adopted sister, Angela Smitty, passed away this week. She was 52, and she had uh, Down syndrome, and they had adopted her when she was a young, young girl. And I remember her being mentioned before. Most of us in our dial knew her well. Yeah. Loved her. Yeah, so Angela Smitty uh, died this past week. And Services are Wednesday at Argyle. Okay, yes. Chuck's wife, Janice, and daughter, Kelly, are traveling home from Texas today. Safe travel. Kelly and Janice are traveling home from Texas. Rich, is it okay to stay and pray for Julia had a good week? Yep, of course. Julia had a good week. Yes. Yes. I mean, I know people are, but... Yes. Keep Donna in our prayers. I understand you've got a cardiologist appointment. Yes. Okay, okay. Well, Sally and Linda, are she going to be traveling this week? Yes. Tuesday, we're leaving to go out to see our sister, Penny. So Pennsylvania? New York. New York. And, uh, Same difference. It's... Uh, <laughs> Okay. Yeah, pray for Sally. Yeah. <laughs> all that time, all that, all that time in the car, boy. I'm telling you. Yeah, it'll be pretty wild. Yep. Makes me want to go. It'll be a lot of fun. Let's pray. Mighty God, thank you that we can enjoy the fellowship of the saints. Um, enjoy that even more, Lord, as we allow you to direct our hearts and minds, our souls, our spirits uh, together before you in worship as we gather as brothers and sisters in Christ before the, the throne of grace, as we come boldly um, knowing that it's no righteousness of our own that we stand before you in prayer but it's the righteousness of God through Jesus Christ by faith. And we believe you. And so we praise you for that. And based on that, we, we have great confidence 
um, Lord God Almighty, that you hear our prayers. We know you're sovereign. Lord, you rule this earth in your providence. You care for us as the sheep of your pasture. And we've mentioned several of your sheep this morning. And, and there's, there's many more that we, we haven't brought their names forward, but they're on our hearts and minds. We do bring John, his last two treatments. And we pray for uh, swift healing for him after getting the second one done <clears throat> on Tuesday. We pray for Chuck and Randy, their continued journey. We, <clears throat> we thank you that, that Julia had a good week. Lord, we uh, bring the Smitty family before you and the loss of uh, Angela and uh, the services there at uh, Argyle this week. We uh, ask you to, uh, well, we would ask again for Sally's uh, um, son and daughter-in-law for healing from COVID. Uh, for Linda and Sally and, and traveling together. And um, just the blessing of that, Lord, um, just, I'm, I'm sure they do, but help them to appreciate the bond, the love that they have as sisters and even a greater bond as, as sisters in the Lord. Um, help us to realize that as Faith Fellowship Church of, of Tennessee, Illinois, the bond that we have this from a, a group of people uh, drawn from various places together to to worship you at this stage in our life that we realize that uh, this is our eternal family. So we care for them with that in mind and we care for them also with in mind that um, this is these are your sheep, Lord God, these this is your body, Lord Jesus. And uh, when we have those things in mind, we're ever so much more careful to honor you in how we speak to one another, how we care for one another. Now, Lord, we lift Donna before you, and, and she's just physically uh, struggling these last few weeks and got a cardiologist appointment. We, we pray like so often is the case, Lord, we would just like to get to the bottom of things and find out what's going on so uh, the healing process can, can begin. Uh, Lord, we, we thank you for um, Marlon and Jeanette and their testimony to us of their love for you and love for each other and just lift Jeanette before you and the example that she is as a woman of God and, and, and battling this, fighting this great battle before her. Uh, think of uh, Kelly and Janice traveling back from Texas and bless their time together. Uh, time in the car can be a wonderful thing, seeing the beautiful countryside, this, this country that we live in. Uh, watch over them, give them safety, uh, care for them, protect them. Help us now, just as we continue in our service, uh, just hush our hearts and minds, Holy Spirit of God, as we sing praises, as we sing the truth of God and salvation as we prepare to hear your word preached to us, to receive it deeply and to change our lives. How we love you. In Jesus' name we do pray. Amen. Would you like to stand as we sing song number 12, Praise Him. Praise Him, praise Him, Jesus our blessed Redeemer. Sing, O oh, earth, Wonderful love proclaim. Hail him, hail him, highest archangels and glory, strength and honor, give to his holy name. Like a shepherd, Jesus will guard his children. In his arms he carries them all day long. our blessed Redeemer. For our sins He suffered and bled and died. He our rock, our hope of eternal salvation. Hail Him, hail Him, Jesus the crucified. Sound His praises, Jesus who 
newborn sorrows, love unbounded, wonderful, deep and strong. Praise Him, praise Him, tell of His excellent greatness. Praise Him, praise Him, ever in joyful song. Praise Him, praise Him, Jesus our blessed Redeemer. Out with Hosanna's ring, Jesus, Savior, reigneth forever and ever. Crown him, crown him, prophet and priest and king. Christ is coming over the world victorious. Power and glory unto the Lord belong. Praise him, praise him, tell of his excellent grace. my Redeemer. I will sing of my Redeemer and His wondrous love to me. On the cruel cross He suffered from the curse to set me free. Sing, oh sing of my Redeemer.
Mighty God, um, the treasure that you've given us in these great hymns of the faith, turn our eyes upon Jesus. Help us to do that now, Holy Spirit of God. Um, just I think again of those uh, with the, the deep struggles, uh, battling cancer, heart problems, dementia, whatever, whatever the battle is, Lord, that um, you, Holy Spirit of God, in, in the deep places of their hearts and minds can, can draw their attention to our Lord Jesus, our Lord and King, our Savior, our Redeemer. And uh, we, we thank you for that, that we can bring our friends, our brothers and sisters, Randy, Julia, John, Chuck, so many before you, Donna, Ron and Connie, just so many before you in this way. Holy Spirit of God, grab our full attention now. Help us to bow before you to that wonderful, wonderful, the, the sweet place, bowed low before the throne of God, and teach us in Jesus' name we pray, amen. It is no wonder that they were weeping and wailing and mourning. They loved the world, and the world they loved has now gone, poof. In a single day, game over. On that imminent future day, the earth dwellers will lose everything meaningful and significant to them. Because everything meaningful and significant to them has nothing to do with the right relationship with their creator. The Apostle John warned us, 1 John 2.15 do not love this world, nor the things it offers you, for when you love the world, you do not have the love of the Father in you. For the world offers only a craving for physical pleasure, a craving for everything we see, and pride in our achievements and possessions. But these are not from the Father, they are from the world. And this world is fading away, passing away, other translations would say along with everything that people crave, but anyone who does what pleases God, does God's will, will live forever. John also, the same Apostle John, writes these stunning words in this morning's text to those who are grieving the loss, the collapse of this world. Revelation 18, 14, the fruit for which your soul longed has gone from you and all your delicacies and your splendors are lost to you, never to be found again. That phrase, the fruit for which your soul longed has gone from you. This is speaking of what the earth dwellers would consider the fruit of life, the fruit of which for which their souls longed. The things of this world that brought the deepest joys and the most soul-filling pleasures and satisfactions to the human psyche. Those things are gone forever as they're represented in the world system, Babylon. For 6,000 years, God has provided the bounty of this world in spite of the gross sin and rebellion of humankind because he is rich in mercy, great in love, and very, very patient. But now, on this coming day, time is up. If you want to understand what is possibly, possibly the big lesson of the book of Revelation, then understand this. God will finish what he has started. God will finish what he has started. That's what Revelation's about. Reaches all the way back to Genesis. And he'll finish what he started to the praise of his glory. Ephesians 1, verse 11. In him we have obtained an inheritance, having been predestined according to the purpose of him who works all things all things according to the counsel of his will, so that we who were the first to hope in Christ might be to the praise of his glory. 
in him you also, when you heard the word of truth, the gospel of your salvation, and believed in him, were sealed with the promised Holy Spirit, who is the guarantee of our inheritance until we acquire possession of it to the praise of his glory. Paul also writes in Philippians 1, 9, And it is my prayer that your love may abound more and more with knowledge and all discernment, so that you may approve what is excellent, and so be pure and blameless for the day of Christ, filled with the fruit of righteousness that comes through Jesus Christ to the glory and praise of God. And 1 Peter 1, 6, In this you rejoice, though now for a little while, if necessary, you have been grieved by various trials, so that the tested genuineness of your faith, more precious than gold that perishes, though it is tested by fire, may be found to result in praise and glory and honor at the revelation, at the apocalypse of Jesus Christ. This morning, with great authority and the brilliance of the glory of God, an angel, an angel officially announces... Time is up for the great city. It is game over for the spiritual, economic, and political jewel of the God of this world. First this morning with great authority and the brilliance of the glory of God, an angel officially announces the fall of Babylon. Revelation 18.1, After this I saw another angel coming down from heaven, having great authority and the earth was made bright with his glory and he called out with a mighty voice fallen fallen is babylon the great she has become a dwelling place for demons a haunt for every unclean spirit a haunt for every unclean bird a haunt for every unclean and detestable beast for all nations have drunk the wine of the passion of her sexual immorality and the kings of the earth have committed immorality with her, and the merchants of the earth have grown rich from the power of her luxurious living. An angel with the great authority and the brilliance of the glory of God Almighty proclaims the fall of Babylon. Babylon had become a dwelling place for everything demonic and despicable to God. Demons everywhere, unclean spirits everywhere this city. As we've just to review, we've looked at Babylon as an actual city and as representative of the world system. When John says, writes to us that I, in the text that I read, yeah, do not love the world and the things of the world, he's speaking of the world system, the Babylons, the Babylonian system. And it is again a literal city. It is a literal city that will be that will be destroyed again but representative, but the whole system collapses when the city is destroyed. The rulers of earth had thrived from the wealth generated through the unholy fusion of sex, money, sex, money, and religious and political compromise. I put this definition of fusion in here because it's really what this is, and uh, I, I just keep this, this the, the concept, I keep understanding it better and better, but it all has to do with idolatry. It all has to do with a mix of what is human and what is God. And that's, all, that's what idolatry is. But fusion means the process or result of joining two or more things together to form a single entity. A merging of diverse, distinct, or separate elements into a unified whole, a political partnership, a coalition of parties or factions. And that's what political Babylon is. Really, political Babylon and religious Babylon. It's all together, a conglomeration. And it's built around, it's built around sex and money and politics and religion. And it, it speaks of sexual immorality, which is speaking of idolatry, but it's also speaking of actual sexual immorality. We can see that in, in our world. And it's just all brought together. Idolatry is the fatal, soul-damning mixture of a human understanding of God and faith. It's okay, so you take, on one side you have a human understanding of God and faith. 
You mix that with the love of this world. Idolaters blend what God gives with what they determine is good and evil into their own particular formula for the good life. You follow that? We take, we take all these things and we say, now this is what I've come to, this is what I believe is the good life. And it can be very religious, but if it's a mixture of our human understanding, of our human thoughts, we've, we've, uh, we've tainted what God says, we've corrupted, that's a better word, we've corrupted what God says, it's idolatry. Whatever form it shit takes, whatever... Um, it, it, however it appears, it's idolatry. And it, it rises to a crescendo. It, it seems like they've had great success, although there will be great torment, because remember we've talked about too, when you, when you have all these alliances between unsaved, the unsaved, so the people who are walking in darkness, people who are uh, thinking they're wise, they've become fools, thinking who their, their thought processes have degenerated, combine that with a world with, with the, the, the main world leaders are filled with demons, and many other people will be too, because there has to be at the very minimum 200 million demons, and there's really quite a bit more than that if we sit down and started figuring things out. Just bring all of that together, and so it, it's never truly utopia. But with some, when people are deceived, because again, the dragon, Satan, the devil, the ancient serpent has deceived the whole world. And so at least it has the appearance of look of what we've got going. And there is great wealth and there's great power and it's all represented by this literal city, Babylon. I don't know if you, I didn't know, but uh, Saddam Hussein, maybe you knew this already, had actually started rebuilding Babylon at one time. I don't know what the status is now. I did not follow that up. But we have to understand what it represented. And what it represented may be more than any of those other things for the earth dwellers. Remember, the earth dwellers are those who are opposed to God. They've taken the mark of the beast, the unsaved, whatever, however, whatever we would call them. But what it does represent, it represents great hope. Maybe we can, through all these troubles, see they've been through all the judgments. Uh, Revelation 17 and 18 are probably in between the, you know, we had the, uh, the first we had the trumpets, or no, the seals and then the trumpets and then the bowls. And this is probably, this is all happening, chapter 17 and 18, uh, between the sixth and the seventh bowls, judgments, before the great earthquake and before some of those other things come. So even though they're, they're, they could see all the turmoil, um, but it's like there's, there's, there's great hope. Maybe we can pull this off. Maybe our God will finally put an end, defeat the God of heaven, these heaven, these aliens from outer space, and we can have this world peace that we've sought for so long, apart from some God telling us how to run our lives. So just keep that in mind, the hope that's represented by Babylon. With Secondly, this morning, with passion and urgency, another voice calls the people of God to come away from the impending doom of Babylon. Verses 4 to 8, Revelation 18, 4, Then I heard another voice from heaven saying, Come out of her, my people, lest you take part in her sins, lest you share in her plagues, for her sins are heaped as high as heaven, and God has remembered her iniquities. The people of God are called to come out of Babylon, lest they take part in her sins and her judgment. This comes in two ways. It's figuratively and literally. Figuratively, it's talking about the world system, and figuratively, it is even now that we are to come out of the, of the world system. And you, you have the verse there that I... Uh, uh, read earlier, I read it from the New Living Translation. This is in the uh, ESV. But it says, do not love the world or the things of this world. Uh, down to verse 17, this world is passing away along with its desires, but whoever does the will of God abides forever. The people of God are called to separate from the world system in all its forms. And many of those forms are very religious forms for uh, denominations that have been have been 
uh, around for decades and decades and, and centuries. So we, we can't, it just, whatever form it is, again, whatever form, the mixture of the human and the divine is idolatry, and it's what this is speaking of, this world system. 2 Corinthians 6, 14, uh, don't team up with those who are unbelievers. How can righteousness be a partner with wickedness? How can light live with darkness? What harmony can there be between Christ and the devil? How can a believer be a partner with an unbeliever, and what union can can there be between God's temple and idols? For we, I see, again, it always comes back to God or you hold idols. That's what is always the contrast. For we are the temple of the living God. As God said, I will live in them and walk among them. I will be their God and they will be my people. Therefore, come out from among unbelievers and separate yourselves from them, says the Lord. This is not saying don't have an unbelieving friend. You know, don't go to Walmart because there are believers there, unbelievers there or whatever. Is talking about our close associates and our bonds. What, who, who, who are we re, uh, associated with in that way? Uh, these, these strong, strong bonds of friendship. It will affect just as it, just as it affected the children of Israel when they entered the promised land and they started worshiping the idols of the land. It's the same thing. We don't realize that, but it's really the same thing. Therefore, come out from among unbelievers, separate yourselves from them, says the Lord. Don't touch their filthy things, and I will welcome you, and I will be your father, and you will be my sons and daughters, says the Lord Almighty, because we have these promises, dear friends. Let us cleanse ourselves from everything that can defile our body or spirit, and let us work toward complete holiness, because we fear God. So then, figurative, then literally, the people of God are called to flee Babylon. Now we're back up to the end times in Revelation but the people, there will be people living in this city, and they're saying, leave the city. Uh, two things. One, it's going to affect your lifestyle. You will fall for that lifestyle. You will compromise the faith. And two, you will be there when it is destroyed in this single day. And it's similar to the lot being called to flee Sodom and Gomorrah, Genesis 15, 19, 15. As, mor as morning dawned, the angels urged Lot, saying, up. Take your wife and your two daughters who are here, lest you be swept away in the punishment of the city. The vengeance paid to Babylon will be equ equitable and fully deserved. Uh, Revelation 18, 6, pay her back as she herself has paid back others and repay her double for her deeds. Mix a double portion for her in the cup she mixed. The vengeance paid to Babylon will be due to her pride and arrogance. Revelation 18, 7, as she glorified herself and lived in luxury, so give her a like measure of torment and mourning, since in her heart she says, I sit as a queen, I am no widow and mourning for, and I am no widow and mourning I shall never see. Mourning as in the sadness, not as in the mourning. What you will possibly will come to your mind as we're going through this, it's like you may be thinking, God, do you have to go that far? This is brutal. Do you... Well, he's God, isn't he? Because we can't understand. See, what, ha what is the problem is, is we do not understand. Even though we see the ravages of sin in our lives, in the people around us that we love, around the world, the agony of the Afghans now, and all this, we do not understand the depths of sin. Don't you dare sit in judgment of God. Because what you're going to say then is your human understanding is superior to his infinite wisdom in dealing. So when we read these things, we can draw back and catch our breath and say, oh no, but don't, us, don't let us dare to judge God and say this is God is good and righteous and holy and pure and true in every single thing he does. That's what we know. Why this? the extremes of this, we can't completely understand that, but what we know is our God is good. So next, uh, the vengeance paid to Babylon will be swift in a single day. For this reason, her plagues will come in a single day, death and mourning and famine, and she will be burned up with fire, for mighty is the Lord God who has judged her. And the, the, for the city, it does seem like this will be something, and, and this will be from God, though. This isn't going to be uh, inner turmoil. This isn't going to be 
somebody else dropping an, an atomic bomb or a nuclear bomb. This is God is going to be doing this. We'll see him demonstrate this graphically. He'll picture it as casting a millstone into the sea. Third main point this morning, the voice from heaven continues and describes the weeping and wailing and mourning of the kings and the merchants of earth. Verse 19, <clears throat> well, the powerful rulers of the world who partnered with Babylon will be stunned. These people will be absolutely stunned. The power brokers are so deceived, they're really caught up in this thing. They said, they're thinking, man, we've really got this going. I mean, they are making so much money, they don't even know how much money they have. They have so much power, they have no idea the, the, how far reaching their power is. They are going to be abs. They thought this machine is perfect, it can never be broken. And in a single day, God being God, he's going to stop the whole thing, crash the whole thing. Verse 9, and the kings of the earth who committed sexual immorality and lived in luxury with her will weep and wail over her when they see the smoke of her burning. They will stand far off in fear of her torment. They don't want to get caught up in that. And say, alas, alas, you great city, you mighty city Babylon, for in a single hour your judgment has come. Now, not in your notes, I've uh, Matthew 24, verse 38, for as for as in those days before the flood, these are the Lord's, Lord Jesus' words, for as in those days before the flood they were eating and drinking, marrying and giving in marriage, until the day when Noah entered the ark, and they were unaware until the flood came and swept them all away, so will be the coming of the Son of Man. Just, it'll be just like that. It's like everything's going, hey, we got some semblance of, of normal, but it, no, that God will finish what he has started. Uh, the leaders of commerce in the world who traded with Babylon will mourn the loss of wealth. Uh, verses 11 through 19. And the merchants of the earth weep and mourn for her since no one buys their cargo anymore. Cargo of gold, silver, jewels, pearls. Let me just say something here in weeping over the cargo. Because see, the interdependency now of the world economy. Uh, it's like people will say there's no more isolated economies. We're all together and so we'll think that, yes, there's competition with, with China would be the main one the competition with. But China also wants us to do well, so we buy all their stuff. And we want them to do well, so they buy our stuff and whatever, whatever country it is. So if you can just imagine if the United States was gone from their list of customers in an instance, then it's like, well, now where do I sell these things? The, the ships are going to be... In, in the water. We, they, there's no port of call there because it's gone. Do we have enough fuel to get back to wherever they came from? So cargo of gold, silver, jewels, pearls, fine linen, purple cloth, silk, car, scarlet cloth, all kinds of scented wood, all kinds of articles of ivory, all kinds of articles of costly wood, bronze, iron, and marble, cinnamon, spice, incense, myrrh, frankincense, wine, just picture... Um, you know, Kohl's and, and Bergman's and, and all these uh, all these department stores, the, the you know, and just this all the, the, the riches of the world's goods, all this is gone. There's no there's there's nowhere to, to sell it to now. Uh, frankincense, wine, oil, fine flour, wheat, cattle and sheep, horses and chariots and slaves, that is human souls. Here's our verse, the fruit for which your soul has longed has gone from you. See everything from this world the good life of this world, the, the fruit for which your soul has longed, your soul longed has gone from you and all your delicacies and your splendors are lost to you, never to be found again. It's all gone and it's gone for good. There'll be no coming back from, well, we, you know, we roughed things, toughed things out through the pandemic, but things will be coming back. No, it'll never be coming back. Um, it'll never be coming back. The merchants of these wares and who gained wealth from her will stand far off in fear of her torment, weeping and mourning aloud. Alas, alas, for the great city, it's called the great city four times, and great city, only great city other times, the, for the great city that was clothed in fine linen, in purple and scarlet, adorned with gold, with jewels, and with pearls, for in a single hour all this wealth has been laid waste. And all shipmasters and seafaring men, sealers and sailors, and all those and all whose trade is on the sea stood far off 
and cried out as they saw the smoke of her burning. What city was like the great city? And they threw dust on their heads as they wept and mourned, crying out, Alas, alas, for the great city, where all who had ships at sea grew rich by her wealth, for in a single hour she has been laid waste. And then the contrast, though, in heaven, the earth mourns, but heaven is called to rejoice for God's judgment of Babylon. Verse 20, Rejoice over her, O heaven, and you saints and apostles and prophets, for God has given, now this, this is important, for God has given judgment for you against her. And we're going to see more of that. The violent end of Babylon is vividly portrayed as a millstone thrown into the sea. Really, what in these last few verses are not really new information, but it's just a graphic portrayal. God wants us to get the picture. Here's this end time system. It seems to, to the many, the deceived, that it's invincible. It holds out all hope for the earth dwellers in their rebellion against God. It's the hub of wealth and power and sex and everything else. And God says, in a moment, just take the millstone and just throws it into the sea with its a violent judgment. It's swift. It's final. Revelation 18, 21, Then a mighty angel took a stone like a great millstone and threw it into the sea, saying, So will Babylon, the great city, be thrown down with violence and will be found no more. And the sound of harpists and musicians of flute players and trumpeters will be heard in you no more, and a craftsman of any craft will be found in you no more, and the sound of the mill will be heard in you no more. No more music, um, no more craftsmen, no more sounds of industry, and the, no electricity and the light of a lamp will shine in you no more, and no more weddings, no more parties, no more get-togethers, no more family reunions, no more birthday celebrations. The voice of the bridegroom and the bride will be heard in you no more for your merchants. The great were the great ones of the earth, and all nations were deceived by your sorcery. And in her was found the blood of prophets and of saints, and of all who have been slain on earth. Conclusion this morning. The end is coming. Are you ready? See, from I, I know I've repeated this, but from the very beginning, uh, one of the purposes, main purpose of Revelation is to to have us ready, to have us ready as individuals and to have us ready as a church. Well, that should be pretty obvious, it shouldn't it? Because in chapters 2 and 3, early on in the book, it was letters to seven churches telling them basically, here's what's going on in your church, get it together, repent. We need to get it together. If we're sin in our lives, we need to repent. And it was the same message to the churches are we ready the end is coming god will finish what he began back before the creation of this world this whole thing started and he will finish what he began to his praise and glory god will judge this anti-god world system with finality and violence god will judge this anti-god world system suddenly uh second peter 2 3 2 Peter 3, 8, but you must not forget this one thing, friends. You do have this in your notes. Uh, dear friends, a day is like a thousand years to the Lord, and a thousand years is like a day. The Lord isn't really being slow about his promises. Some people think, no, he is being patient for your sake. He does not want anyone to be destroyed, but wants everyone to repent. But the day of the Lord will come. we got to stop there for a minute. But the day of the Lord, this will come. You know, we've heard this for a lot of years, haven't we? And But we need to, we need to allow God to make that a reality, such a strong reality that we live in view of that reality, that it purifies our lives, that it focuses our thinking, it, re, it refines everything that we're doing. The day of the Lord will come as unexpectedly as a thief. Then the heavens will pass away with a terrible noise, and the very elements themselves will disappear in fire. This is the end, the end. And the earth and everything in it, on it, will be found to deserve judgment. See, there's those words again. Well, the judgment is always deserved. No matter how it may seem overly harsh or severe to us, it's always deserved. God will judge this world for every sin which humans have committed since Adam and Eve ate from the forbidden tree in Genesis 3. 
the enmity first acknowledged in Genesis 3 and carried out through the entirety of earth history as the people of earth murdered the prophets and saints of God is brought to a head in God's devastating judgment of the world system. See, it's interesting because he keeps going back and reaching back and he reaches all the way back to the murder of Abel. And all this, if we've, we've looked at it, it springs from Revelation, or Revelation, Genesis 3.15, where this enmity, this, this battle is first spoken of, Genesis 3.15, I will put enmity between you and the woman, between your offspring and her offspring. God is addressing the, the serpent. He's basically addressing the Satan, the devil here, the ancient serpent. He, Christ, shall bruise your head and you shall bruise his heel. And the first recorded murder we have from that enmity was Cain angry about his rejection. We looked at that last week, didn't we? His rejection of his, his method of worship. He wanted to choose. He was very angry with God. Wouldn't accept how he decided to worship. And he went out to the field and killed Abel. Um, Revelation 20, we saw every, every sin. And we could do more in depth study of this but it, it's almost beyond our our comprehension or under our understanding why this is necessary but from the beginning of time god uh in, in pro see what he's providing for is a holy forever his glory he has to deal with sin completely totally effectively so that means every sin we get a, a, a taste of that in revelation 20 verse 11 then i saw a great white throne and him who was seated on it from his presence, earth and sky fled away, and no place was found for them. And I saw the dead, great and small, standing before the throne, and books were opened. Then another book was opened, which is the book of life. And the dead were judged by what is written in the books. See, everything's been recorded from the beginning of time. And, they, and there will be a price to pay. What have we looked at? Well, Christ, if we believed in Christ, he paid the price already. He took the wrath of God. And, you know, blessed be the name of our Savior who, our, and our God, our God who, who did this for us. But if you aren't covered by the blood of the Lamb, you, that you will pay for every sin you've committed. The books will be opened, what's written in the books, according to what they had done. What I also see in this, and I was surprised in this is the God attributing his judgment so many times that he's done this for us. And I just briefly mentioned that when I read it earlier, but I'll bring it up again. Of God loving his people, the sheep of his pasture, super abundantly beyond our ability to understand. And here's what's the surprise, and that he will avenge us. It, it, my thought is, is I, I, I'm not worthy to be avenged. But see now, what, I, what Dave Scott has to do is say, well, this is God talking, so this is the right thing to do, right? It's back to that Revelation 18, 20. Rejoice over her, O heaven, and you saints and apostles and prophets, for God has given judgment for you against her. I don't understand that, but I accept it and I believe it because God's infinite in wisdom and he's God and we're not, are we? Revelation 18:24, and in her was found, in her, in Babylon, the city, the world system was found the blood of prophets and of saints and of all who had been slain on earth. We, we see this God caring for his human, uh, well, his human creation, but those who've been redeemed. Ephesians 1, verse 3, blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who has blessed us in Christ with every spiritual blessing blessing in the heavenly places, even as he chose us in him before the foundation of the world. So those, he said, I've avenged you, their, their sin, I've avenged it for you. He's speaking of those who he chose even before the foundation of the world. It's pretty mind-boggling. Um, it is. Even as he chose us in him before the foundation of the world, that we should be holy and blameless before him. In love, he predestined us for adoption to himself as sons through Jesus Christ, according to the purpose of his will, to the praise of his glorious grace, with which he has blessed us in the beloved. Um, 
in another verse um, in, in 2 Thessalonians, we're not going to read all of that. We'll read part of the first verse, uh, fifth verse rather. This is the evidence of the righteous judgment of God. Jump down to the sixth verse. I think I've got this highlighted uh, in your notes. Since indeed God considers it just to repay with affliction those who afflict you. I can understand that somewhat, but still it's like I, I wasn't worthy. I'm covered by the blood of the Lamb. I can see God avenging himself, God dealing with sin. But um, this is how thorough this is. We will under maybe understand this better <clears throat> one day. As the song says, by and by. Uh, you may be thinking at this point that, but, but I don't understand. It's very possible that someone is thinking this, someone hearing this, and the the, the vengeance, um, the judgment and vengeance, the violence, uh, such such finality, and and in, in in your mind and you're thinking, I I just don't understand. I I know my neighbors. They're they're such good people. They don't know the Lord. They're somewhat religious. They don't know the Lord. But I just I just can't understand. I just can't understand how they're going to pay. Uh, they're going to be under God's judgment like this because we can we have these these things are troubling your mind it's it's very possible that you've come to a place of decision or awareness regarding see here's what it, do who who do you actually trust with your life who do you actually trust with your life you're going to trust our view or God's God's view what God tells us in his word so let me help you think through these things Slowly, sincerely, honestly, we need to think through these things when we have those thoughts that I just can't accept that, that Bill and Mary next door here as such a good couple that they're going to go to hell and be under the judgment of God. Let me help you think through that. Do you believe and trust, do you believe and trust God with your life? Do you believe and trust God with your life? Of course, there's no way that this, these things that we can understand this in its entirety, it is beyond us, but we, God has given us very clear instruction that we can understand much of it. What we need to do is come to the reality as to where we actually are in our day-to-day -day life. Because see, where we are in our day-to-day -day life will reveal where you are in regard to eternity. See, if, if you have no relationship with it, it's not, I'm going to live however, and I'm going to enjoy the, enjoy the fruit of my soul of this world. And then I've said enough or done enough or I've been good enough, one day I'm going to go to heaven. No, see, your life reveals that you actually aren't walking with God. So there will be no heaven. What we are doing now reveals who we are and who we will be and who we are forever and who we will be forever. So, the question might be, so do you, Proverbs 3, 5, do you trust in the Lord with all your heart? And then the second part of that, do you not, do you not lean on your own understanding? See, that's a big one. Because I'll, you'll have, I just can't understand. And some people, when they say, I just can't understand, that means I don't understand, but other people mean they, what they mean is, I don't understand it because I can't understand it. It's not true. We would all have that temptation. I don't understand it, so it can't be true. So what has happened is you're not trusting in the Lord with all your heart, and you're not leaning. You're, and you are leaning on your understanding. See, anything short of trusting God with all your heart and not leaning on your understanding, anything short of that or different from that is idolatry. It's you've taken. Your human thought, your humanness, and God's divineness, and you've blended them, and you've come up with something you're comfortable with. See, that's what a lot of churches do. We we take this blend, something we're comfortable with, you know, not way to the left and not way to the right, but just let's just blend it together, and we're we're comfortable with that and establish a fellowship. So, is it possible that when you face, but I don't understand, you dig your heels in because you don't like or you don't understand the teaching? You ultimately reject the things that God commends as true and right and good. Please understand that's what you do. It, it's not a harmless, it's not neutral territory. When you say, no, I, I don't accept, God, the, this stuff on vengeance and judgment. Well, what, what you've done is you've rejected then what 
you've rejected what God believes. You've rejected the one who's communicated to us from his infinite wisdom. And you prefer what you believe to be true and right and good over what God says is true and right and good. When we come to those decisions, see, we either, really, I don't see any other choices. We either bow or we rebel. Because we all have these things in Scripture we're uncomfortable with. We see some of the harshness, the severity. But I either bow before God or I rebel. I either, I either say, Lord, I don't understand it, but, but you're God and you're infinite in wisdom. I'll bow before you and leave it with you. Or we'll say, no, I don't understand that, so that can't be true. Because, you know, in, in my world, I, I, just, I wouldn't have that in, in my world. So this morning... If I'm just asking you, please stop, think, pray, and consider who are you actually trusting with your life? Who do you actually trust with your life? Let's pray. Mighty God, we thank you. Holy Spirit of God, thank you for speaking to us this morning. Thank you for our worship time, our prayer time, our fellowship time together this morning. How we praise you and love you in Jesus' name. Amen. <clears throat>
Amen. Amen.